morning to everyone and to welcome you to this special press conference hosted by the St. Kitts and Nevis Football Association as part of the preparations for Thursday's big football encounter at Waterpark, St. Kitts and Nevis versus El Salvador. Of course, we know that the game is scheduled to begin to kick off at just about 8 o'clock in the night time and we want to encourage all of the football fans in St. Kitts and Nevis uh, to be part of this great excitement. It is the first time that our country, St. Kitts and Nevis, will be participating and competing against El Salvador. To help discuss and present the latest in terms of updates for the preparations for the match on Thursday, we have the General Secretary of the St. Kitts and Nevis Football Association, Stanley Jacobs. We also have the President, Anthony Johnson. We have with us Inspector Keynes from the Police Department, specifically the Traffic Department. Christine Walwin, Marketing Consultant. Jacques Passy, the Head Coach for Team St. Kitts and Nevis. Juan Pablo Rodas, the Physical Trainer for Team El Salvador. And of course, your host, Val Henry from VH Communications, the PR agency for the SKNFA. As I said, game time is 8 p.m. Thursday, 11th at Warner Park. And I'm going to begin by asking the General Secretary, Stanley Jacobs, who is right next to me, to give us a quick synopsis in terms of readiness for Thursday's game. Stanley. Thank you very much, Val. Good morning to everyone in Radio Land. Good morning to our football family. Of course, a special welcome to the delegation from El Salvador, um, including the media that has joined us from El Salvador to our beautiful country, St. Kitts and Nevis. Um, Val, we are as ready as ready can, can be, as I, we are less than now, um, less than a day away from the kickoff of this round two of the CONCACAF qualifying um, World Cup competition for the 2018 World Cup competition. Both teams, well, well, both teams are, are, are ready. El Salvador is, is on island, they're here. All the match officials appointed by FIFA are here. So everything is, is in place and set for kickoff time. We are just making some final touches to the, the preparation of the stadium, but I can assure everyone that the Warner Park Football Stadium will indeed be, in, be ready and in tip um, tip top condition for, for kickoff. So, like I've said, um, it's been a long journey. Um, we started um, several months ago with our preparation leading up to this um, World Cup competition, and uh, we, we, we are quite pleased with the progress of preparation um, up to this point. And, like I said, we all now we're just waiting for that whistle to blow and start the ball game. We also want to say a special welcome to all of our fans and listeners throughout St. Kitts and Nevis and overseas who are following this press conference on ZIZ Radio and of course, <coughs> excuse me, ZIZ Television and hopefully we also have other members of the media that we want to acknowledge uh, from WinFM, Freedom FM, SKN Vibes, MyV.com, The Observer and uh, we also want to say a special uh, good morning to or fans in Nevis, many of whom will be coming down to sink it on Thursday for the game. I'll now move to the president of the SKNFA, Mr. Anthony Johnson, to get a sense from the association as to how important this game is to his association and to the country and the community of football. Thank you very much, Val. Um, first of all, let me say a pleasant good morning to all present and to welcome those persons who are visiting our shores from overseas. Um, I believe that this game is extremely important for the development of football here in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. In that, our aim, first of all, is to advance beyond this round of the World Cup qualifying tournament. And in order to do so, it's critical that we defeat El Salvador. So that is our first mission.
condition on Thursday night to defeat El Salvador. But in doing so, there would be a number of benefits that would arise to St. Kitts and Nevis football. One, we expect that our international rankings on the FIFA list will improve significantly to, a, to the extent that it will drop below the 100 mark. And that is significant because um, for us to get our players into the European market, um, the rankings would have to be at least below 100 and in fact um, below 75. It's also important because um, this game is being streamed throughout the world. In fact, we have with us um, media houses, not just from El Salvador, but we have Traffic Sports, who is televising this game through, throughout Europe, throughout the Americas, and so on. And obviously, the exposure that it will bring to our players here in St. Kitts and Nevis is tremendous. In addition to that, from the point of view of St. Kitts and Nevis as a federation, the uh, benefits that can be arrived from the exposure as a touristic de destination are also significant. And so, for those reasons and more, we are asking the general public, our fans, in both St. Kitts and Nevis, to come on out tomorrow night at Warner Park at 8 p.m. to see the Sugar Boys take on El Salvador. It will be the first time that we are taking on, at in St. Kitts and Nevis, a team from Central America. And we believe that our supporters should come with their passionate exuberance. Do not let, leave anything at home other than any illegal substances. But come with all your passion, with all your vigor, because that 12th man is needed, and the 12th man is the support from the general public. And so I can undertake that the event will be an exciting one. It is not just football that you will be attending. It will be an event. There will be entertainment. You have the famous Iron Man. We have other types of um, entertainment that will be in store. And we have, of course, the beautiful game of football because that is really what it's all about. And so tomorrow, there's a spectacle on show. And so I ask no one to stay at home. Do not miss it, because you will regret being part of history. We'll come back to Juan in a while, the physical trainer for El Salvador. But I just want to ask him one, since being in St. Kitts and Nevis for uh, maybe a, or almost 48 hours, what is your initial uh, feeling to date? We'll come back with, datas, with, with, with details later. Since being in St. Kitts and Nevis for about almost 48 hours, what's your first reaction uh, to be in the side of, uh, of the Caribbean? Ok, buen día para todos. Este, gracias por la oportunidad. Eh, nosotros estamos acá, al igual que ustedes, con un sueño futbolístico, que es este, pasar a la siguiente fase. Creo que para todos es muy importante. Es, también es nuestra primera vez que enfrentamos a esta zona del Caribe. Eh, es muy bueno, como lo comentaban, para la, la región, o sea, también para el mundo, darnos a conocer, tanto como Centroamérica como el Caribe, que vamos en pie de lucha para crecer y, y fomentar el fútbol a lo que es a nivel internacional. Eh, ¿Nosotros? Ok. Eh, bueno, el país ha sido muy acogedor, o sea, ha sido una, una isla que no nos esperábamos lo, la atención que se nos está dando. Eh, hemos tenido una buena percepción, tenemos un buen conocimiento de su equipo, es un equipo muy, muy, muy bueno eh, y aparte acerca de la de la estadía acá creo que ha sido bastante buena, bastante linda y una experiencia muy buena lo que es a nivel futbolístico. He's saying that, that the country, he's, he's appreciating the treatment that he's receiving from the country, but in terms of the game, he's also expecting a, a well-fought game and 
you know, it's good that we're trying to improve our level in terms of the, the ranking FIFA. And so um, he's looking forward to the game. They also studied us and they know that we can perform very well. And so they're looking forward for the game. But in terms of St. Kitts, he's appreciating the hospitality. He think it's very good and he's looking forward one day to return and to another Caribbean country. Of course, we have the head coach for St. Kitts and Nevis, um, already Kittishanized, Nevisionized, uh, Passy. So it's almost sounding redundant saying welcome, because we have already embraced you as one of us. But welcome anyhow. How have you been settling, meaning you personally and the team? Good morning to everyone. First and foremost, I must say that uh, I'm tremendously happy to be here in, in St. Kitts. It has been a wonderful experience. I was with the team in Mexico for a whole week, and now we're in St. Kitts. And just the hospitality of the people, the way that it, every single person is approaching the game, being here, the food, the atmosphere, the island is an outstanding destination. It's an outstanding place to be, and I'm tremendously happy. Regarding the game, we're going to play most likely St. Kitts and Nevis' most important game here in St. Kitts in the history. We've never faced an opponent like El Salvador. Uh, we know El Salvador quite well. I know my team quite well. It's going to be, just like the president said, a huge experience tomorrow in the stadium. Uh, it's, it's, it's our goal to create one of the most important games in the history of, of St. Kitts and Nevis. And uh, we've worked for that. And I certainly hope that tomorrow you will find a fantastic spectacle in the game. Thank you, Mr. Jack. Sure. The president a while ago spoke about you know, the challenge and the task of hosting an event like this, which I know is not easy or possible without great corporate support. And I want Christine to speak to us about how invaluable that support has been um, for the past uh, couple of months preparing for this event and uh, who are some of the corporate partners that have come on board? Thank you, Fran, and good morning to everyone. First, we would like to thank the corporate entities that came on board to, to partner with the Football Association so that this um, event will be successful. Our major partners include Beaumont Park, St. Kitts Tourism Authority, St. Kitts Nevis Olympic Committee, St. Kitts Nevis Anguilla National Bank, Digicel, Carib Breweries, Island Purified Water, Hosford's Group of Companies, and Fast Cash Caribbean. These are our partners who have already signed up with us. Of course, we have some who are uh, we are in the process of signing, and there's, I would just want to say that there's actually room for more to come on board because we would like to, we would, can use all the support that um, that come and, and join with us. This is a major event that we're producing for tomorrow evening, and of course, you know, it's lots of money involved, and we would like the the local uh, corporate citizens to come on board and, 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 and join with us to make sure that we produce the best game ever. Inspector Keynes, thank you, Christine. We're going to be expecting thousands of folks who are going to be coming to the game on Thursday, and they'll be coming from all over the country. What is in place, especially in terms of the traffic management and security generally? Thank you, Val, and good morning to all. The traffic arrangement plan will be in place as per usual. Traffic will flow from south to north along the road on the east of, on the west of us, that is outside the American bakery. Also, traffic will be restricted from the old boys school going beyond the Carnival City on both sides of the road. Also, limited parking will be that is parking for the VIPs and for the ministers of government would be on would be on would be on Lozac Road and on the 
apron just outside of the park on Lozak Road. The general public will be permitted to park at the Bastia Senior High School grounds. Police officers will be on the ground to ensure the traffic flows and of course to ensure that persons who park the vehicles, their vehicles will be safe and it will be in place from 5.30 p.m. on the day of the match until 30 minutes after the match would have ended in the evening. And of course, wherever and whatever we can do to improve, we will ensure that the traffic and the persons who park the vehicle, the vehicles will be safe. Thank you very much, Inspector. We're going to come to questions from the media in a short while. And just to remind, there's a mic that has been made available to facilitate that. But the ticket prices, Stanley, what can fans expect? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, tickets um, went on sale last week and are still on sale <coughs> at the football office on Lozac Road. The price uh, for the bleachers, uh, as we will call the grounds in, in, in local um, terminology, is $30. The price for the stands, or, or we say the stand or the stadium, is $50. And we have introduced a special price for children between the ages of 5 to 12. It's $20. Now, having said that, I want to stress the importance of purchasing your ticket early and arriving at the stadium early. That is critical to ensuring that you have the best experience tomorrow night at this important and historic game. Um, so I'm encouraging fans to purchase your ticket today, between today, um, Wednesday, and tomorrow, Thursday, 4 p.m., we, sh we should sell out all our tickets. That way it ensures when you arrive to the stadium early, on Thursday evening, you will go through the security process without any hassle. We want to avoid, as much as possible, a huge crowd outside of the ticket booth, five minutes to wait, um, trying to purchase tickets and get in time, get in time and, and watch the game. We want to warn um, patrons that if you choose to wait until 8 o'clock to purchase your ticket, you will run the risk of losing missing a good portion of the game because you will still have to go through the required security checks before you enter the stadium. So that is important. So again, the prices are the bleachers, $30. The stand, $50. Children between the ages 5 and 12, $20. One, let me come back to you, one. Um, in terms of the El Salvador team, just trying to get a better knowledge, especially for the public in St. and Nevis. Not so much a profile, but yes, a profile. What can you tell us about the El Salvador team in its recent uh, encounters? Uh, introduce the El Salvador team to the Kiddush and Nevisian public. What can you tell us about your team? Bueno, en realidad, o sea, somos un equipo nuevo que viene trabajando con una nueva metodología. Eh, a raíz, gracias a, la, a nuestra federación que eh, ha tocado el tema de poder buscarnos unos fogueos de alto nivel, este, a pesar de que cualquiera puede criticar los resultados, pero en realidad en lo que es la idea del staff técnico que nosotros mantenemos es una idea que va en crecimiento. Recordemos que, como repito, es una, una selección que está totalmente renovada desde prácticamente todo a través de la, de la fractura que nos, que nos afectó a nosotros futbolísticamente, pero estamos en la línea correcta, eh, como staff técnico nos sentimos muy contentos del plantel, del crecimiento que ellos van teniendo, del des desenvolvimiento que ellos están mostrando, de la madurez futbolística que han venido mostrando a raíz de todos los dos juegos. Eh, recordemos que no en todos los juegos hemos tenido a todos nuestros jugadores como hemos querido, pero hemos visto jugadores, hay talento y esperamos primero Dios sea un juego bastante bueno, eh, un juego que permita... Eh, demostrar lo que en realidad se ha venido trabajando como, como staff y como selección y como cuerpo técnico nacional. Is that we um, we're having a new team because they were having issues in El Salvador, so they basically 
we formed a new team, but the staff think that they have a good enough team. And the level, the level sorry, of the team and the, the chaining and the progress of the team, they, they realize they have a lot of maturity in the team, even though it's new, so they're really looking forward for a good game. And the staff has a lot of confidence in the, in the team, even though, once again, I say that they are a new team because they were having some issues in El Salvador. Thank you very much. And of course, the same for Team Singleton and Nevis, Jacques. Uh, of course, the team was in uh, Mexico recently, returning home on Sunday. Um, give us a little composition information in terms of the team, what material you have. Well, I can tell you that the team, if it has something at this moment, is that it is a tremendous group. It is a tremendous group of players. We have a group of 23 players that really feel and find in each other not only quality as a human being, but as friends. We are a strong group. Football-wise, some of us just came to know each other, and I'm not talking about me, I'm talking about the players. Some of the players that you're going to find tomorrow are new players to the national team. We have a group that is, I believe, quite solid in all of the lines. And uh, most of all, you will find a group that tomorrow will give absolutely everything in the game. Absolutely everything. This is our compromise to the St. Kitts and Nevis uh, people. This is our compromise to the St. Kitts and Nevis association. It's a team that's going to be at its highest level. At its highest level, according to the players that we have. We certainly are facing a top opponent. This must be said. We are facing a top opponent. El Salvador, uh, Juan, in a, in a way, underestimated a little bit of what has been going on in El Salvador the last couple of, of, of weeks, the last couple of months, but they have faced top opponents like Argentina, like Chile, like Honduras, like Guatemala, like Ecuador. They've gone through several important games, and uh, they've improved. We've improved as well, and uh, you're going to see a very exciting match. Great. And it's now time for some questions from members of the media represented here. Uh, we have Precious Mills, we have MyV.com, we have WinFM, we have Observers, ZIZ, SK and Vibes. And of course, we are being carried live uh, on radio as well with television broadcasts in addition. So it's now over to you, members of the media. Uh, indicate and introduce yourself and the media organization and indicate to whom you're addressing. Okay, good morning, everybody. Uh, Magic from WinFM, Sports Factor. Um, I have two questions. Uh, one, first of all, um, to the coaching staff, uh, is there a long-term plan for the general improvement um, of our national team and, f and the physical and mental aspect? Good morning. In Mexico, we worked uh, both of the issues that you just handled and that you just told us. We had a mental skills coach working with the team, and we have a top physical trainer working with the team. Certainly, when you engage in such an important game, you first have to focus on what is an immediate, what is an immediate issue of importance, and that is the game of tomorrow and the game of Tuesday next week. But most certainly, I can tell you this, I have dealt with all of the members of the association and I can tell you that the association members are tremendously professional. Uh, I can tell you this not only wholeheartedly but with knowledge. I come from a country that is very, very much into football and the way they are approaching football as an association is not an approach for the El Salvador games. It's an approach that has a long-term standing, that has a long-term vision in every sense of the word. So I can guarantee you that you should be in this way uh, very mindful that, that the association has a completely clear plan for the next several years. And it's good that you ask that because these type of things, physical improvement, mental improvement, requires a certain period of time. It's not a matter of a week. It's a matter of being consistent, and I can tell you that I'm absolutely thrilled by the way the association is dealing with not only these issues, but several other issues. Thank you, um, thank you very much, um, Tassi. Um, just to add um, magic in relation to a long, our long-term vision, um, the Sinkers Nevis Football Association um, last year in 2014 put together our strategic plan 
um, which is a, our development plan for football over the next um, four years. And a key component of that plan, of course, is the development of our national team through the various stages. And so, like I said, development is a long-term plan. It's, development is never a short-term plan. So it begins with the various stages of development, starting from the grassroots level to the youth level to the senior level. Now, when you, we get to the senior level, that is when we begin to look at elite footballers, and that is where the national team sits, um, with a pool of elite footballers, meaning a pool of footballers that have participated, uh, played their football at the very highest level um, against the very best players in the world. And through that, um, the way we achieve that is by ensuring, providing opportunities for our players to play um, either professionally or collegiately um, through the United States college system or the North American college system or um, professionally, professionally, whether it be in, in Trinidad, um, in Europe, um, we have players as far as um, the Philippines. And so that is the elite level that we want to take our players to so that when they come back to play to the, for the national team, they bring back a level of process, professionalism, they bring back depth. So that is where, where we, the vision of the Football Association is, is heading. Glenn Bart from MindView.com. Uh, my question is to President Johnson. Now, I know that this is a very important game for the national team, and all of the focus will be on them. But my question is, were there any opportunities for the upcoming younger players to perhaps witness some of the practice sessions or to engage with some of the, um, the players on the national team? Right. Well, thank you. Uh, uh, just as the president is about to answer that, we just want to remind our, our media folks Try to get as close as possible to the mic when you're about to uh, ask your question. I now go to the president. Thank you. Um, in relation to the issue of other players, young and upcoming players, having the opportunity to interact with um, some of the senior players, the opportunity indeed has been presented on various occasions. In fact, um, just a few weeks ago, we traveled to Barbados where we played against Barbados and defeated them um, in a friendly encounter. But in that team, you had quite a number of young players um, who are not necessarily in this particular squad, but who were able to rub shoulders with some of the senior players, um, uh, some of whom are in, in, in the squad. In addition to that, it so happens that we have our under-23 Olympic qualifying team presently in training because they are going off in another two weeks or so from now to Haiti to take part in um, Olympic qualifying round in Haiti. And um, they have been able to observe um, our senior team in practice over the last few, few days. Um, so there, there are opportunities and we will continue to ensure that further opportunities are presented. In fact, um, on match day, all of our practicing national players, whether it be at the under 23 level or at the female uh, level, they would be allowed to come to the game without having to pay once they are in their national um, colors, their national uniform. Because we believe it's important for them to get the opportunity to see a match of this level um, so as to aid their own development. Thank you. The question is directed to the head coach of the St. Kitts Navy's team. Do you feel like you have had enough time? You're hearing? Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you're, you have had enough time to build correct chemistry, build the correct spirit in the team, especially considering that um, players coming from different cultures? Um, and to President? Do you feel like you have done enough to placate those persons out there? You have stressed the importance of having a good crowd, a good support as the 12th man. Do you feel like you have done enough to placate those persons out there who, don't, who feel like you 
we don't have enough homegrown players in the team. Um, and two. Continue, please. To the head coach of El Salvador. <coughs> what, what's, what is the average age? The average age of your team. You say it's a young team. What's the average age? And is, is there any exciting player? Is there any exciting player that we should be looking forward to? Player or player that we should be looking forward to, to see? Okay, as those questions have been answered, we just ask the next journalist to take possession of the mic so that we can run smoothly. I go now for the answers. Thank you for the question. Regarding time, 10 days is not enough, but 30 days is not enough either, and a year is not enough either. In football, you have what you have, you see? And this is the, this is the beauty of national teams. You have what you have because you have players coming from different leagues, from the US, from the Philippines, from the UK, from St. Kitts and Nevis, from Trinidad. We have to face realities. And this is not our issue. This is the issue of every national team. This is not club football. This is national team football. And in national team football, you have the periods of time that are established by FIFA, by the, by the proper time you have the qualifying games. So would I like more time? Yes. But I would have said exactly the same thing if you would have asked me after 30 days or after 45 days. I would have asked for more time because it's not club football. We had 10 days to prepare the team. Uh, there are some football aspects that can be improved. But in terms of the chemistry, I can tell you that after 10 days, the chemistry of the team is wonderful. It is wonderful. The, the internal chemistry, the way teammates see each other, you asked about the, the two cultures. Uh, you're right, we cannot deny that. There are some uh, players that are homegrown, other players that come from uh, other countries. But the reality is that tomorrow and in every training session, they are not UK players, US players, Trinidad players, or homegrown players. They are players from St. Kitts and Nevis. And I'm not a Mexican coach, I'm the coach of St. Kitts and Nevis. So we all represent the same interest, the same team, and we have the same goal. Uh, you're right, time is short, but this is our reality. This is, not, this is not a fault of anyone. This is just the reality of football and the way football is worldwide. National team football requires that, that you work in small periods of time. Okay. Well. Thank you, thank you, Edmonton, for your question. <laughs> and I may just add, in relation to what Jack just said, um, the reality also is that, in addition to the uh, camp that was held in Mexico recently, a lot of work had been put in by Jack and his team long before the camp. And so it was not just a period of 10 days um, that the the coaching staff had to work with the players um, because there were a lot of interactions going on with the various players who are um, stationed around the world um, leading up to that, to that camp. As far as the issue of um, whether we have done enough to placate the general public as to whether we have enough homegrown um, players in the team, well, to be honest with you, that is not an objective of the association to placate anyone. The objective really is to, 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 to find the best team for Sinkis and Nevis to win. That is the objective. We have to be very clear about this because too often we, 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 we want to have our cake and eat it. We want to say, well, we, we didn't do well enough. But when we do make the effort to ensure that we select the best team, we say, well, um, they're not homegrown. What do we want, really? We are playing in a World Cup qualifying game against El Salvador. El Salvador is ranked 84th in the world. El Salvador has made the World Cup finals on at least two different occasions. What are we saying? Do we want the best team out there, or do we want to placate people? But, 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 but in any event, in any event, to further answer your question, we have on the team, on the, in the squad, and I'm not part of the selection process, so it's not my job to select the team. The coaches select the best team. But after your question, I sat here and I wrote out, just from my own limited memory, the names of players who are all homegrown in this present squad. And we speak of Jolani Archibald, Ewala Lachlan, Atiba Harris, 
because he is homegrown. Don't forget that. Gerard Williams, also homegrown. Notwithstanding that he's, he's been playing in Trinidad for the last number of years. Tishan Hanley, Josh Leader, Jamal, Francis, Orlando Ak Mitchell, Adolphus Jones, Trizan Leader, Modassa Howe. And that is just from my limited memory. How many, how, many, how many players did I call? I believe about 11 of a squad of 23. So you have Devon. and Devon Elliott, that's 12. So you have 12 out of 23 persons who are homegrown. So if the issue is placating anyone, I believe that we have done so. So you have a, a reason well, to placate them? The, the reason, the, to come out. Well, the reason, with respect, uh, Mr. Watt, the reason that the crowd would want to come out is to see Sinkis Nevis on show playing the best football at the highest level. That is the reason why we are asking the crowd, and we believe the crowd will come out, to see the best Sinkis Nevis team on show. de la conferencia, o sea, es una, nuestra media ronda de los 24 años, eh, jugadores importantes eh, prácticamente para nosotros como staff técnico como para el país, todos son importantes, porque en realidad traemos un plantel que también tenemos jugadores en el exterior, jugadores de mucha de élite se puede decir, en el cual nosotros hemos tratado de traer lo mejor del país. Si hubiéramos querido o si por nosotros fuera como staff, o sea, estuviéramos colmados jugadores, pero lastimosamente esto es así. Nosotros tenemos que inscribir un, un total de jugadores y los jugadores que traemos son los jugadores que nosotros como staff, como país, confiamos en ellos. Tenemos nuestra confianza, nuestra ilusión, nuestro sueño, al igual que ustedes depositado en el grupo, en los 11 que van a entrar, tanto como los que están en el banquillo, que van a poder dar la cara por el país. We have a very strong team. The, the team is about 24 years and in average old. It's very young, but it's very strong. Also, for the staff and El Salvador, we think that the team is, everybody is important. We have players coming from different countries as well who are playing in elite um, competition. So for us, we think that we have a very good team. And also, um, we, we also like saying we're going to play hard, play strong, and because it's our illusion and our goal to win, just like St. Kitts would like to win and improve our standing as well. So we have prepared for four teams that are being brought home uh, for national duty. Ok, gracias. Mucho gusto. Oscar Reyes del Periódico el Gráfico del de Salvador. Nada más, eh, primero, ponerle un poco de contexto. ¿no? En nuestro país, eh, en los últimos días, hubo un poco de confusión, porque en el sentido de que eh, para nosotros el técnico principal eh, fuera... Porque hemos hecho unas cuantas, eh, un poco de research, ¿no? un poco de búsqueda, eh, y no, el técnico principal eh, seguía siendo, creíamos, Jeffrey Hazel. ¿no? Luego, ustedes he presentado como el técnico principal y en ese sentido saber si el señor Hazel sigue siendo parte de este proceso y cómo están eh, repartidos por así decirlo de forma uh, oficial los cargos solo para salir de esa pequeña confusión sí, we also have reporters that are coming home okay <laughs> what, what, what was said is that um, based on the research and investigation, they realized that um, Jeffrey Hazel was the national coach, and it's surprising to them that um, we have a new national coach now, so he just want to want to deal with the confusion, to, to just to clarify, to see um, which one is the coach, and if they, and if Jeffrey Hazel continue to be part of the plantel, I mean, sorry, part of the, the, um, the training staff, or head coach, or assistant coach, what is his role, um, Jeffrey Hazel, what, what role does Jeffrey Hazel play? in the coaching staff. I will answer in Spanish and then the translation will be made to English. A ver, en primer lugar, eh, hace dos meses, la Asociación de Fútbol de San Kitts y Nevis lanzó un comunicado a todos los medios de comunicación informando que me nombraban técnico en jefe de la selección. Consecuentemente, si no vieron el comunicado, eh, seguramente fue una cosa que, que, que pues no, no, no encontraron en su investigación. Pero la realidad es que nosotros hicimos un contrato con la Asociación de San Kitts y Nevis 
con el objetivo de dirigir los siguientes partidos eliminatorios. Jeffrey Hazel había sido el técnico de esta selección los últimos tres años y es un integrante no nada más activo, sino crucial, fundamental, dentro del cuerpo técnico actual que tiene la selección de San Kitsinevis, que lo constituyen cinco personas mexicanas ¿sí? y dos personas propiamente de San Kitsinevis. Entre la gente que está trabajando en San Kitsinevis está propiamente Jeffrey Hazel, ¿sí? también Shavon Douglas, que es una persona que había sido también parte del cuerpo técnico, y entre la gente mexicana se encuentra Oscar Gil, Ricardo Sayas, Héctor Herrera, Alan Sacal y Elisabia. ¿Cómo está constituido el cuerpo técnico? Tenemos un cuerpo técnico amplio, vasto, en donde cada quien tiene funciones y naturalmente yo como director técnico en jefe, simple y sencillamente tengo una labor principal que es distribuir las funciones dentro del cuerpo técnico. Puedo afirmarle que el señor Hazel no nada más uh, es un amigo excelente de, de un servidor, sino que dentro del cuerpo técnico tiene labores muy, muy importantes, eh, pero la realidad es que mañana el que va a dirigir el partido soy yo. Ok, about two months ago, the, the local federation contacted the, the technical team of Mexico, and um, even though they're working as a team, Jeffrey Hazel and Shavon Douglas continue to be important for St. Kitts national team. He as the head coach, a person in charge, he has directed everyone from the Everyone from the coaching staff, they all have their different function. And so Jeffrey Hazel continued to be very important in the team. So also is Shavon Douglas. But the most important thing that tomorrow he would be the person who would be in front of, of the team or as coach. All right, so. All right. Good morning. Kylie Johnson, ZIZ Radio and Television. Um, my first question is to you, um, Coach Passy. What's the mood like in the camp at this moment? And also with such a, a gap, sorry, with such a gap difference in the FIFA ranking, does that matter? Will that matter at 8 p.m. tomorrow evening? And um, Mr. Johnson, um, Jacobs can answer this question. Have any provisions been made for fans who wish to journey from Nevis to view the game? It's a very fair question. Uh, the atmosphere in the camp is uh, excellent. Excellent. There is a level of, of very high expectations in terms of what we're going to face tomorrow. Always when you are a day prior to a crucial game, the atmosphere gets to be a little different than what we were facing in Mexico. Why? Because we are in Mexico, we don't have press, we don't have the fans, we don't have the friends of the players. So here you come and there is a normal sense of expectation. I can't call it tension because it's not. I call it expectation and it's normal. If you don't have that sense of expectation prior to a game like tomorrow's game, then you're not into the game, you see? So the sense is we're very happy, we're very united, but there's this level in which we are all, we're all just waiting for the game because we've been together for 10 days. This is how what I describe it. Regarding your second question, uh, 25 spots on the, on the FIFA ranking is, is significant. But it's not the FIFA ranking that is most significant in football. In football, you always have pros, you have cons as a team. Uh, El Salvador has a lot of strengths. We have our strengths. And in football, what you do is you potentialize your own strengths. So it's not a matter that 84 faces 112 and 84 wins against 112 or 50 faces 110 and 50 wins. The FIFA ranking has a reason to be, but at the end, each game, the team that wins is the one that is capable of simply potentializing your own strengths. We have our strengths. We know of our own strengths. And El Salvador certainly has their huge strengths as well. So tomorrow will be a duel among two teams that are trying to put their strengths at the use of the entire team. And that's the team that's going to win the game tomorrow. Uh, thank you very much, Caloni, for that um, question. The uh, matter of transportation from Nevis for the, our fans in Nevis is still a work in progress. It, that is um, something that has always been very challenging because, of, you know, of course, the game will be played at 8 o'clock in the evening um, and scheduled to be finished around 10 
p.m. by which time the ferries would have um, closed. So that is an issue that we are still working on. Like I said, that is a work in progress. We have been, though, um, advertising the game very, very heavily in, in Nevis, and so we expect um, um, some support. Um, I will say we expect um, a good support of, of, of Nevisions to come down for the game. And so I want to use this opportunity to encourage the ferry operators to, to put on that special run for at the end of the game. We know, we anticipate that there are many persons in Nevis who would want to journey down to, to see the game. Of course, the worry is always, how will I return home? And so I want to take, take this opportunity to encourage the, the ferry operators um, out there, if you're listening at this moment, to, to make that special um, run tomorrow evening after the game so that our um, spectators from Nevis can um, come down and watch the game worry free and they don't have and they have a, a secure transport to take them back home. Okay. Jeremy and Gabriel, um, it's Nevis Observer. Question to the El Salvador folks. Um, based on research done, you um, El Salvador would have lost at least three of their last five games. How is it um, you express confidence in a victory tomorrow? And you also indicated that you have young players in the team. How are you going to walk with that weight on your back and blend that with the young players? How, um, how would you express confidence knowing that record as well as um, the, the loss and the young players? Also, secondly, um, you have not qualified for the World Cup after so many years. How, how is El Salvador walking with that weight or horse on your back coming into this qualifying game? Also to the St. Kitts team, a lackluster performance was given or shown on the pitch against the Turks and Caicos, which is somewhat of a relatively low-ranked team. How are you going to change that perception going into tomorrow night's game, as well as Mr. Plasia, if I get the name right. Um, the return leg uh, this weekend. We know, um, I mean, you're Mexican. The Latin American teams do not normally put the CFU teams at, a, a, what should I say, luxury in terms of, of when they travel to these Latin American countries. Uh, what are your expectations in terms of the return leg and can anyone indicate whether or not this game will be played at altitude and how that will affect the outcome of, of, of your return leg? Cuatro primeros lugares del mundo. Eso es un fuego muy bueno, pero en realidad nosotros no buscábamos resultado. Un juego amistoso es imposible basarnos a resultados no te sirve de nada en el sentido futbolístico de crecimiento nosotros lo que más buscábamos era la madurez futbolística de nuestro plantel el crecimiento de cada uno de los jugadores el desenvolvimiento y la lectura de la estructura táctica que estaba y de estrategia que ha estado implementando el staff técnico en este caso el mister Albel Roca ha estado haciendo mucho énfasis en ciertos en ciertas partes del sistema en ciertas partes de estrategia en ciertos contenidos y el juego amistoso para nosotros es un examen, es como un laboratorio para ver si podemos hemos podido implementarlas o no, si el jugador lo está captando, si el jugador está al nivel de que nosotros buscamos y a raíz de eso han venido muchos cambios en el nivel del plantel y como te digo, o sea, nosotros estamos en un nivel óptimo, tanto mental como física, como técnica y tácticamente, o sea, en el cual el plantel viene a dar lo mejor de sí. Como comparto con el con el colega acá presente, o sea, el partido inicia desde que el pito suena y hasta que el referee termine el juego. El partido es para cualquiera, son 90 minutos en los cuales todos tenemos que tratar, jugar, tratar de ganar, jugar lo mejor que podamos, implementar lo mejor que podamos y plantarnos lo de la mejor manera como nosotros esperamos como, como staff en el, dentro del terreno de juego. Bueno, en from, from the point of view in El Salvador, they played four games against the top um, the top four um, countries in the world or some very 
quality teams, but the objective of playing those teams were not really to look for results or win, but was to try and give maturity to the team. And um, they implemented some goals and they came up with ideas and they wanted to see if those goals and that they implemented were came to food during those games. And, you know, during a, an international friendly game, no one really looked much at results, but they are played with objective from each national team point of view. Like, uh, my, com like my friend from Senkit said that uh, when the whistle is blown, it's, you know, 11 against 11 until 90 minutes. And it's who could put what they learn and what they have trained into best perspective, the best team will win. And in terms of the, once again, he said, you know, it doesn't matter really about playing those um, those clubs and those countries, sorry, and losing. It's all about trying because he said earlier that the team is very young and they lost a number of players. So they're trying to use the friendlies they, as um, a way of maturing the team and getting the chemistry of the young team together so that they could um, try and, you know, play against and kids. ¿Cómo ustedes piensan por qué no ha calificado por muchos mundiales? ¿Qué pesa se lleva a ustedes en cuando va a enfrentar San Kitts y Nevis? Bueno, nosotros en realidad, o sea, el tema de los mundiales eh, tenemos una historia, eh, al igual que, que otros países en Centroamérica. Eh, nosotros también hemos venido haciendo trabajo de base, también el trabajo de la federación ha sido muy buena, en este caso el, el caso de la fomentación, el desarrollo. Eh, estuvimos participando en recién Copa eh, eh, Juvenil, que era el caso de la Copa de Turquía 2013, eh, luego en especialidades como playa, hemos tenido buen rendimiento en lo que es a nivel de selecciones eh, sabemos que nos hace falta mucho camino por recorrer, sabemos que nos hace falta mucho trabajo por hacer sistematizar un poco más las cuantificaciones y desarrollo de las cargas y fomentación del fútbol a nivel nacional, pero no es un problema que nos venga a afectar a nosotros, Le, como te repito, tenemos el plantel en un estado diferente, es una selección totalmente nueva que viene implementando un sistema de juego totalmente diferente a lo que se ha venido implementando a nivel nacional y creo que la experiencia del, del staff, de, tanto de Carles como de, de Albert eh, es algo que nos ha venido a ayudar para crecer y, y, y bueno pues mañana esperamos que, 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 que se nos dé y que esperamos primero Dios, eh, los muchachos estén iluminados y estén acierten en lo que es la, el desarrollo táctico del juego Okay, he said, okay, the team, the national team of El Salvador, even in spite of the fact that they have not been to a number of World Cup, they, the national team along with the federation has been putting a number of plans together and 2013 they played against, they played in the, the um, junior World Cup, that's the under 20, and they also played very well in the beach tournament World Cup. So those are some of the ways in which they're using to improve um, the fact that they have not been to a number of World Cup, but at the end of it, we are trying to use our um, knowledge, our experience, the coaching staff that we have. Even though, again, the players are very young, we're using all that we have to in front, to play against St. Kitts on Thursday. And um, again, he think that um, once it's 11-11 and it's 90 minutes, everybody has to show what they, what they can do. And he think that his team will be able to perform very well in terms of the, the maturity that they have gathered during the, the friendlies and um, the training sessions. And so he's looking forward for a very good game and he thinks that they, they have matured very well and they are ready for the game against Kids. The two questions you asked, question number one, uh, regarding some changes you're going to see from the game Turks and Caicos and the game that uh, you're going to see tomorrow, my my hope is that the players have understood perfectly well the need to be balanced in football. To be balanced in football is crucial. And uh, this is something that I particularly seek that the team will show tomorrow. Question number two, regarding our team going to play in Central America or in Latin America, I can tell you that I've seen many teams, I've been in many teams where I've played internationally, games in Central America and Latin America and I wouldn't be 
scared about the conditions or, 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 even, or even hesitant about what can happen because the reality is that it is football. We are going to be in a hotel, we're going to be in training grounds, we're going to eat food and we're going to play a game. So our concern is not the next leg. Our focus, our absolute focus is the first leg. And once we finish the first leg, we will evaluate where we are, the score we had, and what we have to do in the second leg. Because so many things can happen tomorrow that you don't plan for the second leg. You plan for the first leg and you try to win the first leg. And that is the objective. Russian Dixon Eskin Vibes. Uh, question to the coach of St. Kitts. Um, has any scouting been done of the opposition? And if so, how tactically ready is the team? And question for both coaches. Um, what style of play can fans expect tomorrow? The question is... Quieres comenzar primero? En cuanto a un sistema de juego, no te puedo hablar porque no soy el director técnico, pero como staff, o sea, van a salir al campo los mejores los jugadores que estén en, en óptimas condiciones. El que esté preparado, el que esté como el míster ha venido estudiando, o sea, tenemos, recordémonos, un equipo de análisis que ha hecho un buen trabajo. Esperamos que primero Dios todo se dé y, 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 y bueno, que gane el mejor para mañana. Okay, the thing is I am not the coach, so it's kind of difficult for me to explain the, the style in which they're playing, but based on his knowledge and the preparation that they have done, they think he thinks that they are very well prepared for tomorrow and we'll look and see what happens. What I can tell you is that uh, in these times where Twitter is everywhere, Facebook is everywhere, videos are everywhere, systems of television are everywhere, they know absolutely everything about every one of our players and we know absolutely everything about every one of their players. So in reality, it's not a fact. Uh, it's not if we have studied them or they have studied us. They know about us, we know about them, and it's going to be more of who's able to develop their game in a better way. Buenos días, eh, señor Yaques. Eh, tengo tres preguntas para usted. ¿Qué le ha llamado más la atención del Salvador, su próximo rival eh, en estas eliminatorias? ¿Quiénes son los jugadores que están en un nivel más profesional de la selección de San Kitts y Nevis y que, por cierto, el Salvador tendría que cuidarse de ellos? ¿Y cómo espera que sea el desarrollo del juego del día de mañana, que es un examen quizá el más duro de lo que viene en estas eliminatorias? Mira, la primera pregunta era... ¿Cuál era la primera pregunta? El, eh, ¿cómo, ¿Cómo será el desarrollo del juego el día de mañana? Ok. El sistema... Oh. Okay. He wants to know what, um, in, for, in terms of the national team of St. Kitts, what about El Salvador capture the attention of St. Kitts? What attracts them or which, who do they have to pay attention to? He also wants to know how many um, players are there from um, outside and who, who players are important. And he also wants to know what system of or uh, what style um, St. Kitts is going to be playing tomorrow. A ver, mi amigo, le voy a contestar de la siguiente manera. Uno, ¿qué me llama la atención de El Salvador? Me llama poderosamente la atención el tremendo orden táctico que tiene sí, como equipo. Verdad, usted, tiene me llama poderosamente la atención un equipo que sabe hacer bloque muy bien. No, no, no espera que le conteste yo la segunda pregunta, sinceramente. O sea, ¿quiere que yo le diga de quién se tienen que cuidar ellos? Esa, digo, digo, si quiere usted, este, <risa> si quiere usted, eh, esa se la podemos. Yo creo que es una pregunta óptima para que le haga a Albert Roca o le hable a Juan o le, hable, o le haga a Carles, ¿no? Pero ah, yo, yo, yo no le voy a decir de quién se tiene que cuidar. Es, 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 es como si yo le pregunto, es como si yo le pregunto a Juan, oye, a ver, una pregunta. Eh, ¿Va a jugar Álvarez por derecha, sí o no? ¿Va a jugar Seren, sí o no? ¿Va a jugar Flores, sí o no? Pues yo no, yo no le voy a preguntar. Yo tengo mis propias conclusiones y ellos tendrán sus propias conclusiones. ¿Que me llama la atención su equipo? Pues claro que me llama la atención. Lo dije el otro día en una entrevista. Yo pienso que la prensa, y lo digo abiertamente, yo pienso que la prensa ha sido demasiado dura con un equipo que ha enfrentado equipos top del mundo y que ha mostrado un orden táctico toda vez que se ha enfrentado a un equipo de primer nivel. Entonces yo pienso que voy a enfrentar a un equipo de primerísima línea en todas las líneas. Ahora, ¿de quién se tiene que cuidar? Pues pregúntele a él a ver si le quiere contestar. ¿Quieres contestar? 
is that you know it's very difficult for me to it's almost impossible for me to answer a question like who do I have to worry about on the team what he knows is that El Salvador is a very good team te te um, tactically and technically and that's what they have to pay attention to from left to right right to left he thinks that El Salvador is very tactical but for him to say who they're going to be who they're going to be paying attention to who, which player is important and whatever it's um, it's not possible for him to um to say something like that, and he think that the the, the, um, the El Salvador press has been very hard on um on a team on the team, but um what he knows again, he said that twice that he has to respect El Salvador because they are a very very good team, tactically and technically. Asifre. The only thing missing was the emotion. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, final question from Precious. Precious Mills, SK and Choice Time, which is Labour Times newspaper and Choice FM. Um, two questions as well, um, directed to the SK and officials. The first one is what lies ahead um, in terms of the overall training of the national team in um, taking on teams like El Salvador? And as it relates to home field advantage, psychologically, what good does it do to the host country in um, helping to bring about victory? Okay, before you answer, Magic, take it quickly. Okay, um, my question um, is to the coach as well. Um, in terms of tomorrow's game, uh, what scoreline would the coach and players be satisfied with to take the El Salvador into returning leg? A realistic scoreline. Thank you very much. First of all, let me say that in relation to the future, um, after this round of matches, we will sit down with the coaching staff and we will assess where we go from here. But we certainly have a long-term vision in mind, as was outlined earlier by the General Secretary. As far as the importance of um, getting a victory on our home turf, it's extremely important. Extremely important, and that is why it's um, very, very um, critical that the home support is there <coughs> tomorrow night because um, these uh, matches are decided really by away goals. And so it's important not only that we, we win tomorrow night, but that we do not uh, concede. And, uh, because at the end of the day, um, that could be critical in the overall outcome of the, the, the round. OK, that, that's it. You want to take off? OK. I want to thank members of the media. Sorry, members, we, we come to that. Oh, uh, one don't, don't forget to, uh, yeah, I know. Don't forget to stand by behind uh, when we finish here. We go for the final answer, and then we'll go into the closing moments from the president. Bueno, un resultado, o sea, ese, como te digo, no se puede predecir. O sea, en realidad el juego se, a medida se vaya desarrollando, creo que los goles se van a ir dando o, o, o hay por ahí hay un buen planteamiento entre ambos equipos, ya no depende de nosotros, o sea, sino depende de los jugadores, de los que estén adentro del campo. I'm going to use some emotion, like he was doing his hand like this, let me try. He said that, um, that's difficult. And on serious note, though, he said it's, he cannot predict the score tomorrow, he doesn't really have anything to do with the game tomorrow he has on his part so he's all depending on the, the players that go on the pitch tomorrow and whatever they produce the results would come uh, thank you very much president um each of you members of the media for coming out this morning um in your numbers and for participating in the this press conference as you have uh, i also want to thank um the sponsors who have come on board so far, as was outlined earlier by our marketing consultant. And I will just um, go down the list once again because it's critically important that our partners get the mileage um, for their input and collaboration with us. Um, and so we have Human Park, um, the Tourism Authority, the Sink is Tourism Authority, the National Olympic Committee. Sink is Nevis and Gula National Bank, Digicel, the Bigger Better Network, Kai Brewery, Island Purified Water, Fast Cash, and also SL Hotspots. And of course, we would want to thank a number of other stakeholders who have come on board in a big way and without whose involvement and assistance this 
effort would not have been possible. And I believe even at this early stage, I dare say, in terms of certainly the organization of it, a successful one. And so I want to thank um, the local organizing committee, which is spearheaded by the General Secretary, Mr. Stanley Jacobs, and in particular um, involves persons um, here at the office and a number of other volunteers. Uh, and I would want to single out um, particularly Dexter Tewell um, for, for the, the continued efforts that he has made together with all of the other volunteers because there are many volunteers who are part of this local organizing committee and I really want to place on record a tremendous thanks to each of them. I want to thank the Sinkis Nevis Football Association's executive as well for their input and involvement. I want to thank the government of Sinkits and Nevis, and particularly the Minister of Sports, the Honorable Sean Richards, for the contribution that he has made, certainly as far as um, assisting us with the provision of uh, improved lighting facility at the, the venue. And in that breath, also the government of the Republic of Taiwan. Uh, the Ministry of Sports and the Department of Sports, uh, together with Mr. Nubian Grio, the Royal Sinkis Navy's Police Force, the Traffic Department, and Inspector Keynes um, is here. I want to thank him very much for um, the involvement of his department. The Ministry of Homeland Security, um, and particularly Ms. Clara Tuckett. Um, the Passport Office of the Government of St. Kitts and Nevis, the Customs and Immigration Department, the SCASPA, um, the St. Kitts and Nevis Red Cross, um, the Office of the Prime Minister, the St. Kitts Cricket Association, uh, the St. Kitts and Nevis Football Association Security Team headed by Ms. Donnelly Leibert Chiverton, Walwyn Consultants, VH Communications, uh, Ms. my assistant, Ms. Avril Gums, O.J. Samuel, Caribbean Journey Masters, Fire and Rescue Services, Ambulance Services, the Iron Band, all media houses, and I would want to basically name ZIZ Radio and Television, Freedom Radio, Win FM, Sugar City Rock, SKN Vibes, MyView.com, Traffic Sports, and I see um, a, a television cameras here from I believe it is from El Salvador. I want to thank you all for, for coming as well. Vaughn Radio, the Labour spokesman, Democrat newspaper, Think News Observer. Vaughn, uh, Mr. Brian Francis, Mystic Photo World, the person of Mr. Winston Johnson, KM Services, and to all of our ticket sellers and other volunteers, and to the general public, because without you, this game would not be possible. And so we rely on your support, your involvement, your passion for the game, your passion for seeing, seeing Sinkits and Nevis succeed. That is what is going to take us over the hump tomorrow night. And so we ask you to come out in all of your numbers. We want to see Sinkits and Nevis in Warner Park tomorrow night to the fullest extent. Come with your national flags with your noisemakers, come with your bodies painted in your national colors, because we want to show that despite our size, we are indeed a great nation and in that we are a successful nation as well. Thank you very much for your attendance, and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow night. And with that word, we say a special thank you to Hans, to Juan, to yes. Inspector Keynes, to, of course, uh, Jacques, uh, President Johnson, General Secretary uh, Stanley, and Christine Waldwin. I'm Val Henry from VH Communications, the PR agency for SKNFA, and I want to thank everyone for listening via ZIZ and Freedom FM, of course, those who will be listening and to the reports on the various media houses as well. See you Thursday, 8 p.m., Warner Park, kickoff time and make sure you're there early. <laughs>